Hello and welcome to this lesson where we will now start looking at some of Excel's built-in formulas which are known as functions. So little calculations, kind of formulas that have already been done for you so that we can utilize them in our own formulas. And in this lesson I'm going to cover the main five functions of Excel or the kind of five aggregate functions of Excel where especially two or three of them are hugely popular and there's a decent chance that you will need them straight away. Um, Excel though has over 450 functions which differs a little bit depending on the version of Excel you have uh, but they have lots and lots. But the good thing for us uh, learning formulas in Excel is that the way you write a function has never really changed in Excel. So once you know how to write a function and you build up your confidence and you build up your, your competence as well, then we are able to learn new functions and, and adapt and so on very, very quickly and very easily because all functions are written the same. So the actual language and how we do it does not change. Um, it will be like learning to drive a car and then going and buying a different car. Now you've got the skills, it's just adapting to the new scenario and what's required. Okay, so in this lesson I have four numbers in the top left hand corner and I want to start writing functions down column D. So the first one in cell D4 is the most common function of all known as sum. The function that adds up a bunch of numbers. We know from the previous lessons that I could add up those four numbers in the top left corner by writing equals a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4. But if I had 500 numbers, uh, then it's not really going to happen like that. The sum function can add them all up easily, most shorthand version uh, format. Now, over this lesson, I'm going to show a few different ways of writing it as well. You don't really need loads of ways. One way will suffice. But they've all got their own little advantages. Some are more helpful than others. Some are quicker than others, and so on. Uh, let's begin with the sum function. And in that case, there's only really one way to a degree. And that's with the sum button that is on the far right of your home tab. They have a little sigma, little Greek letter. And it possibly says auto sum next to it like mine does. Uh, it depends on your screen size and resolution though. Don't worry if you don't get that. You'll definitely get the icon though. Now this function is the only function to have its own button on that ribbon up there. Now you can get to all the functions from the ribbon. So don't misunderstand me. But it's the only one to have its own button. So if we're using this function it makes sense to click that button but you're probably more likely going to see your colleagues type this stuff in uh, because that is usually the quicker way. OK, now, hopefully some of this looks familiar because it starts with equals. All formulas start with equals, don't they? Then we have the word sum. Now, that's different to the previous lessons, but that is the name of this built-in formula known as a function. So we have to reference its name. It's just like emailing somebody, you'll have to put their name in the or address in the to field. And then we've got a couple of brackets. Now we spoke about brackets earlier, rule of bod mass, order of calculation, and that's kind of what it's doing here. But we don't have to think of it in that way. All functions, and I'll be clear on this, all functions at all times in all versions, always <laughs> will have brackets after their name. It is part of the function's name. It will always be there. If you don't put one, you will get an error. Uh, the thing that does change is what happens inside those brackets. And there's a little blue box below where this function is asking us right now, look, for me to add up some numbers, you need to tell me where the numbers are. And that's what it's doing right now. So what happens inside the brackets is the information that the function needs in order to do its job. So this function is asking you for the numbers to add. So it all kind of makes sense. Now you'll notice that first 
argument, to use its official name, uh, I call them questions normally in my courses. So the first question <laughs> uh, is mandatory, and it's also where we are now, because it's written in bold. So like a little GPS, this function always tells you, or sorry, this blue box, always tells you where you are in a function by highlighting your area in bold. Not too impressive right now, but you know, as we go on, or as you go on in your Excel lives, uh, you will come across far more appropriate scenarios for that. Really, really good. Doesn't matter who you are, you will appreciate that at times, especially in big formulas. Now, it also tells us down there that if we put a comma, then we could select another set of numbers. Number two, we can do as many sets as we want or need. Normally, you only need one. And because that question has square brackets around its name, that means it is an optional question an optional argument. So in this case, we only need one set of numbers. It's asking you right now, are your numbers from cell A4 to C4? And everything in between there. Cell in the top left, cell in the bottom right, everything in between is what the colon indicates. A range of cells. Now that is incorrect. So instead of that stuff it has there, I'm going to highlight the numbers in A1 to A4, and you can see it right that in there as you go. We could have wrote that in ourselves as well, but it's normally easier to highlight. And press enter to run it. And I have the answer of 285. Now that took a little while to do. Apologize for, for the time. Hopefully you stuck with me through that as I tried to talk about some uh, function fundamentals. It's a bit awkward to say. Uh, but I'm trying to really set the ground going, and we'll do the others a lot quicker. Now, if I just click on that cell again for a moment and press delete, I'm going to write it again. But rather than using the button up above, this time I'm going to type it in. I mentioned in the build up that you are more likely going to see your colleagues or your family members or whatever type these in because it's a lot quicker. If you know what it's called and you know what you're doing, it's a lot quicker. Now, maybe not in the sum example, because remember, that's got its own button, but it's the only one that does. So maybe a, a little bit silly using sum as an example, but as I'm typing this stuff in, you can see Excel scanning through the library of functions, giving little explanations to the right about what the function does. At this point, I could double click on sum to take care of the rest, save me typing it in. That will put a bracket in for you. If you were typing that in, remember to put the bracket. Then it asks you, where are your numbers? And we can say they are here. Select those cells. Uh, would you like a second set of numbers? No. Close bracket, enter. And obviously I've got the same answer. It's the same function. But taking a different approach. Okay, right now, getting the rest in there, let's mix it up. For the average, I'm going to click this little drop-down arrow next to the sum button on your home tab. And you'll see the five that I'm going to talk about in the rest of this lesson listed in there. Great news, team. They're all written the same. So when I choose average, uh, obviously it's called average, that's different. But what happens inside the brackets is the same. It says, right, I'll tell you what the average is, the mean average, if you tell me where your numbers are. That's a deal. At the moment, it thinks they're just D4. That is wrong. I'm going to highlight the range that I'm interested in. Uh, double check it, A1 to A4. Press Enter. And now I've got the average of those values. I could do count. I could go for my little drop down here. Count numbers as it's mentioned in the list. Similar story. Same answer, select the range, press enter. So this is all written exactly the same. It's just the job they do and the um so the job that they do and obviously their name that changes. So for the last two, I'm just going to type these in equals max opening bracket, highlight the numbers, see so yes, they're in that drop down. I'm typing them to mix it up a bit close bracket and enter and then for min 
archetype equals min opening bracket select the range close bracket so that's just our first example here in this lesson five functions under a belt already uh, the five aggregate functions sum average count max and min um, add mean average count how many find the biggest find the smallest uh, the five basic needs of any excel user well that's certainly what uh, they assume anyway going to see some other functions in the coming lessons so please stick around